Hello and welcome back to the channel. Hope you are doing well. In this video, I will be discussing my top five MVPs. In other words, most valuable players this season for Manchester United. If you are interested, do stick around and hit that like button. And let's get into it, starting with number five. Aaron Wamba Saka. He locks down that right-hand side, and I think his efforts are often overlooked. Against teams like Liverpool, against teams like Man City, against teams like Chelsea, he locks down that right-hand side and basically forces people like Sterling, people like Mane, people like Pulisic out of the game and forces them to either go on the left side, where Luke Shaw is, or straight down the middle, where the £80 million fridge is. Mr. Captain England himself, a.k.a. Captain America, a.k.a. Mundem's playing through a hip injury. I don't know what else you want to call him. Fridge, slabhead. So I think Aaron Wambasaka is on this list because of that. And the reason why he's not higher on this list, you know, besides him being a phenomenal right back defensively, I think going forward, he didn't get as many assists as he would have liked. He wasn't as disruptive and creative um, in transition play. I think sometimes he does become a victim of holding on to the ball for too long. And as I've said many times on this channel, I think he is a bit robotic in the sense that he doesn't look natural going forward. I mean, obviously, it's gotten better as the season's gone along, but I think you can definitely tell he's not the type of right-back that, um, at least not yet, obviously, he can evolve into this, but he's not the type of right-back that I think is comfortable going forward, like a Trent Alexander-Arnold, who's one of the best right-backs in the world, uh, hands down. Obviously, going forward, he's the best, but I think the way wan beats someone like Trent Alexander-Arnold is on defense, and um, yeah, I think he's just got to work... On that, on that, um, on his game going forward, and he'll be the perfect right back for Manchester United. Bruno Fernandes. Bruno Fernandes. I was debating whether or not to put him onto this list, but the man single-handedly, well, maybe not single-handedly, but he was definitely the catalyst for the run we went on that made us go, come third. Ever since Bruno Fernandes has stepped into Carrington and has stepped into Old Trafford. Manchester United have only lost one game. Think about that. We've only lost one game since signing Bruno Fernandes. And we've won. We've either won or drawn the rest. And those draws came in very handy because we came third. I think Bruno Fernandes, the only reason he isn't high on this list is because he hasn't been here all season. And I think it would be absolutely criminal to put him anywhere in the top three. But I think he definitely does deserve a spot in the top five. And fourth place seems pretty fair. I think his creativity... His leadership, his drive, his resolve, um, his bravado as well, the passes he plays uh, that he's not afraid to play sometimes doesn't look very pretty when it doesn't come off. But obviously when it does come off, it looks fantastic. Uh, Mark Goldbridge famously called him a B-Tech Eric Cantona. And I would say, yeah, he is kind of a B-Tech Eric Cantona, except instead of taking a team from, a, from, from, from second place to a league title, he's taken a team from eighth place, 14 points off third into third. Unbelievable. And that's why he makes my list at number four. Mason Greenwood. This is where the list got a little bit harder. And I think Mason Greenwood, for some people, will definitely be in the, in the top three. For some people, he just won't. But I think you've got to look at the age of the player. And you've got to judge the player where they are in their career. And of course, what they've done for the team. Because you cannot be a valuable player if you're not valuable to your team. Duh. But I think with Mason Greenwood, he's been... Really, 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 really. That's a lot of reallys. Overlooked this season. Genuinely. At the time of me recording this video, I believe he's one of the top three goal scorers in the Europa League, if not the top goal scorer. That just says it all. We've went we've gone on a tournament run because of this young lad. He stepped up when he when he's needed to. He's nearly got 20 goals this season, and I think he will get past 20 goals once the Europa League returns. Um Debut season, pretty much, and uh, it, it's, it's his breakout season, and he's already, already showing the, the the levels that he can play at. I think he's two footed, because he's two footed, he's extremely lethal. He's extremely clinical. His goals, his shots to con his conversion from shots on targets to goals, is absolutely out of this world for for a player his age. It's 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 mental. It's mental. So. I think Mason Greenwood being on this list is pretty self-explanatory. And I think when you compare him with the rest of the team, there aren't many players that come a bit higher. Perhaps 
someone like Fred would have been higher if he had continued his form, but Fred, the massive drop off was was terrible. Um, and that's another thing with Mason Greenwood. He's been incredibly consistent. I think what puts you on this list is consistency in my books. It's all right having a few great spurts of form, but if you consistently prove to be a valuable player, a player that if your team did not have throughout the entire season, they probably would have struggled to get to where they are, then you are a most valuable player in my definition. You, if you disagree, let me know in the comments down below. But yeah, moving on then to number two. Marcus Rashford. Now, Marcus Rashford is a player I wanted to put at number one, I'm not going to lie. But the reason why I didn't put him at number one is because he had a terrible, terrible start to the season. And he was injured in the middle of the season. So, by definition and by contrast to the player who's in number one, which you'll see later in the video pretty soon, he hasn't been consistent because for a certain period of time he was injured and for, for another period, for the beginning period of, of his season, he was just poor, right? But nevertheless, Marcus Rashford's contributions, particularly in the Premier League, are probably a big reason why Manchester United ended up in third. Um, obviously, Bruno Fernandes was a, was a big catalyst for that. Obviously, people like, like Mason Greenwood coming into form at the right time, Paul Pogba returning, our defensive record yada 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 you get you get the spiel you get the spiel but i think when it comes to marcus rashford i think you take away his goals you take away you know i remember the famous goal in the carabao cup where we eliminated chelsea and yeah we didn't win the tournament but we ended up making the semi-final he scored some really really big goals at some really really big moments like the one at the end against manchester city when Mourinho just got hired as tottenham manager and we beat Mourinho earlier that week um yeah, I could go on and on about why Marcus Rashford deserves to be on this list, but we don't have that kind of time, and it's time to move on to number one on the list. Anthony Martial. Anthony Martial is very similar to Marcus Rashford in relation to the amount of goals and assists they've scored this season. Um, but the reason why Anthony Martial is above Marcus Rashford on this list, and Marcus Rashford is actually my favorite player at Manchester United, so it wasn't easy to put someone else above him, but Anthony Martial deserves it. Anthony Martial has been consistently our most valuable players in some really, really key moments throughout the season. 20-goal uh, barrier smashed. Well, maybe not smashed, but he broke the 20 goal barrier. He's proven that he can score 20 goals in a season and shut, like he's basically said, shut up to all these haters out there. Because the biggest thing looming over Anthony Martial was his best season about three or four years ago, even five years ago. Now, I feel old. I remember when Anthony Martial's first season was. I remember people always going back to his first season saying, he was just a one-season wonder, this, that, and the other. He's always injured. He's inconsistent. Well, a few years later, he has made his name. He's, he's engraved his name in the Manchester United team. And he's engraved that number nine right below his name in the changing room. Um, he's, he's really commanded that role, and I'm proud of him. I'm proud of him as a Manchester United player. I'm proud of him as a Manchester United striker. And unless we got Harry Kane or Lewandowski or Obama Young for free... I would not go out and spend money on another striker because Martial is my guy. And actually, even if we got Harry Kane for free, I'd still pick Martial. Ooh, unpopular opinion. But anyways, yeah, that has been your top five most valuable players of the season. Let me know in the comments down below who you think was Manchester United's MVP this season, aka player of the season. And let me know what are your score predictions for the game against Lask later uh, this evening. Um, but yeah... Without any further ado then, ladies, gentlemen, and everything in between, peace out.